Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning. Welcome to World This Morning. Wish you a harsh on such a beautiful day. My morning started off great, of course, because of my coffee, you all know already. So how are you starting your morning? Well, today we need to talk about something. We always talk about, you know, being positive and being surrounded by people who are positive. But today I have a dis different task for all of you out there. Of course, do something that you feel good about, but also try to forgive someone today. Someone from your past, no matter who it is and no matter what they might have done to you, just try to forgive someone because you yourself, first of all, you're going to have closure for that. And then you yourself are go going to feel so good about it. So forgiveness is today's mantra, ladies and gentlemen. And other than that, I'm going to start today with a joke. So a patient asks a dentist, how do you feel, you know, all day putting your hands in someone's mouth? And the dentist says, it's actually, I look at it the other way. I'm not putting my hands in their mouth. I'm putting my hands in their wallets, which is actually so true, because whenever you do go to a dentist, you should be ready to lose hundreds and hundreds. OK, actually, we're not talking about dollars. So thousands and thousands of rupees here in Pakistan, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the 20th of March, and it happens to be Oral Hygiene Day internationally. And this was due in 2007. This was propagated by FDI, and it was officiated in 2013 when this was, you know, being celebrated in different places. So the the purpose was to sort of uh, enable the governments, the non-governmental organizations, the communities and also individuals to first of all start talking about oral hygiene and then, you know, arrange seminars and talks to aware everyone around them to uh, have a better dental health care. So this is what we are talking about today and we have some amazing, amazing women who all happen to be doctors of course two of them happen to be dentists one of them happens to be a general physician and all of them will be telling us about how important oral hygiene is not only for your mouth but also for other parts of your body for your general health and then for your personality as well i mean if you go to different places people are definitely going to judge you by your personal hygiene so without further ado i will be introducing my guest to you on my right hand side we have been joined by dr zoha kamil a dentist hello assalamu alaikum how are you welcome hello, to the show thank you for having me our pleasure absolutely and next to dr zoha we have someone who's been on the show before she is of course very well spoken thus i love to have her because she knows uh, she has always a lot to talk about so this is a general physician we were speaking of this is dr tahira shahid hello assalamu hello assalamu alaikum welcome thank to you. the show thank you for inviting next me next to dr tahira we have dr batul zahra who again happens to be a dentist. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Hello, Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So to begin with, I think I'll start with you, Dr. Zoha. <coughs> Oral hygiene, first of all, why was there a need to have to have it recognized on a special day and then, you know, aware people for uh, around the world about it? Well, uh, when we as dentists, when mm. we uh, see a patient or doing a consultation, the first thing we ever notice is their, the, men, the level of maintenance is their oral hygiene. Mm. So we can tell how well maintained it is just by looking at it. Of course. Yeah. And I'm amazed that people aren't aware that uh, it's not only your teeth or your gums that being right. affected. That's being affected mm. uh, by bad oral hygiene. It's the other part of your body as well. Yeah, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. It is, uh, you can have very scardic effects and uh, hmm. premature birthing, dementia, wow. Alzheimer's. Right, I need to come to those, you know, individually as well. Yeah, yeah, I want sure. to talk about it in detail. Yeah. But coming to you, Dr. Thaira, you know, the theme uh, in 2018, the theme for oral hygiene uh, day for the next three years was think mouth, think health, because your mouth is not only your mouth, right? This is your general health as well. How do you feel about this? Yes, that, that is precisely how it is, right? Oral hygiene is, for example, everything that you eat hmm. goes through your mouth. Yeah. What are some of the most common um, oral diseases that Pakistanis come to you with? Uh, uh, they're like... I can name bleeding comes I'm for sure because the, even I have... There's just a few uh, main things yeah. that people uh, that make people come to the dentist yeah, actually. The most common ones. They're not that aware. So they don't know how to maintain their oral hygiene. Right. They're bleeding gums or they have a toothache or they have swelling in the mouth. And uh, other than that, or yeah, uh, if the teeth get mobile, that's when they come to the oh. dentist. Okay, yeah. so what causes bleeding gums? Because it is uh, very common out there, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure every other person has them, but we don't know the reason. Uh, Deficiency of vitamin C causes uh, bleeding uh, gums, main, if you see yeah. it from my perspective. You no, see it from there the are a number of reasons. Not yeah, a lot of them. Poor but oral hygiene, mm -hmm. it can be due to pregnancy, it can be due oh. to a deficiency of vitamin K, it can be due to scurvy as well. But I mean, the first things first, we're talking about the mouth. So, uh, tartar, hmm. plaque, hmm. they're the basic reasons. Poor oral health, yeah. that's the you know, a root cause for bleeding gums. You should get, get a check with the dentist. Mm -hmm. First thing, if you notice your gums bleeding, especially while brushing. 
Okay, yeah. perfect. Now, Dr. Patul, uh, for you, what are some of the most common diseases that people come to you with? The most common disease that people come to us is with sensitivity as well. Okay. Bleeding comes. But the problem here is that people do not come to us with the early stage of the disease. All right. Because they're uh, they not wait, aware themselves, yes, right? Yes. They wait when the caries uh, go down to the root or the tooth has been ready to get extracted now. Hmm. So, when... Ever there is a pain symptom, patient comes to you. Hmm. But in Pakistan, this is a very big dilemma. There is there is no compulsory dental checkup yeah. after every six months or even on annual basis. There is no compulsory dental going checkup. I was to ask that how often should you visit your dentist, even if you do not have a problem? Every six months. Every six. Months, every six yes. months. Okay. Every six yeah. months, you should visit your dentist. But the problem here is that people visit the dentist when there is. The tooth has been about to when now the damage extract. has been done. <laughs> right, we wait for something bad to happen. Unfortunately, yes. yeah. in Pakistan, something it's worse to yeah. wait yeah. for something worse to get happen. Right, right. And it's not just about visiting the dentist. It's about the awareness of oral hygiene in general and hygiene in general as a right. whole. As a nation, we are not very particular about hygiene, even though our religion specifies it, and it's so yeah. it's, it's so necessary. Yes, it's and you know, we are actually uh, you know asked to rinse our mouth five times a day during prayer, right? Oh, yeah. And right. that just shows how important it is for us to maintain it but unfortunately when you go around looking uh, hmm. looking at people here they don't know the importance of how important it is to brush your teeth and the you know the common concept ke share mu nahi dhota or the lion doesn't you know and that is so lame but that's how they take it and you know and they're actually proud of it they don't uh, they don't realize that bad breath it can be such a turn off for so many people Absolutely. bad Absolutely. breath and bad oral hygiene and the moment you smile and if you if somebody sees all the stutter and plaque on your on, on your, in your smile that, that is such a you know such a you know, it, once, it's repulsive. It's so repulsive right. for somebody who is even talking to you or, or even, you know, interacting with you. Unfortunately, that's Absolutely. just not there in our society. And right. we don't have that kind of awareness. We don't realize its importance. And we just think that, you know, going to a doctor mm. or has something to do with disease. And we don't realize how cleanliness is so important for us well, even otherwise. Well, as well. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, even some people do have stained teeth too. Yes. That's sometimes because yeah. of smoking. And then smoking, some say it's because yeah. with chai bought me though. I mean, that's not an excuse. Take care of them, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so on this so ladies and gentlemen, we have a small video to share with you. This is about oral hygiene, you know, specifically some animations about how to rightly brush your teeth. Let's take a look at this and then we come back and continue the conversation. For health and to keep your teeth in the clear, brush for two minutes twice a day and at least visit your dentist twice a year. Limit sugary and starchy foods. Eat a well-balanced diet. Drink milk. Change your toothbrush regularly. Use fluoride toothpaste and floss once a day. Take care of your smile and it will last quite a while. Well, this was informative, of course, but you know what, actually, a lot of children and actually a lot of adults also know that there's only a duo of toothbrush and a toothpaste. And then I thought there's a trio because there's floss as well. But then Dr. Zoha over here told me there's actually four things. So please tell us about that. Uh, first things first, brushing. Yeah. Brushing your teeth properly. Then there's flossing, there's mouthwash, there's interdental brushing as well. People who have gaps in their teeth, they Like need. I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. You have a dash steam of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, you have to use an interdental brush hmm. if you have gaps in your teeth. Okay. Yeah, because the plaque and the tartar is stuck between your oh, teeth. They, right, you cannot right. clean it ju just by using a simple brush. Hmm. And flossing is also part of your oral hygiene and mouthwash as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, Dr. Tahira, you know, um, as we've already mentioned, there's so many things that we need to take care of. But there are some people whose excuse is, oh, we're just too lazy not to floss, or we're just too lazy not to use a mouthwash or something. Or, we've done a mouthwash for a but that's not the answer, right? So, what should we do about that? <laughs> I think you should tell them that if they are going for a job interview, or if they're working somewhere, and if they want to have an impact on other people, if they mm. want to feel heard, if they want to feel important, and they want people to actually take them seriously, Hmm. Imagine if you go to somebody and the person sees that this person isn't capable of taking care of his own health. Right. How is he going to take care of my organization Imagine. or something that I'm, uh, you know, entrusting him with? Hmm. So that if we go it go by that way and we hmm. go by, you know, trying to influence them and tell them that how important it is for their daily lives, hmm. how important it is for their daily relationships, right. how, you know, how if they want to impress somebody or even, you know, uh, even coexist with somebody in a nice way and interact hmm. with them, how important 
important it is for them to smell good, for look good. And, and imagine how our prophet had stressed on it. He even yeah. said that, you know, you have to use misvak and yeah. you shouldn't even have uh, consumed onion before going in a gathering. Right. That just shows how important it is to have and maintain good oral hygiene once you're going in a congregation. Right. So I think even that is more than sufficient for them to realize the importance of doing it. That's, thank you so much. That's rightly said. And, you know, uh, sometimes it does get rude. I mean, the person next to you, if they have um, bad oral health, you don't really know how to sort of inform them yeah. or tell them. But here's a polite way to do it. Uh, if you have a gum or if you have a candy or something, you can just politely offer, hey, do you want a gum? I'm pretty sure they might get a hint of what is wrong, but this <laughs> yeah. is the right way to do it. So, okay, Dr. Batul, uh, just a while ago, Dr. Zoha started telling us about all the diseases that are interlinked, you know, some of the common risk factors that are shared between diseases. Let's start with each of them, because again, it's not only mouth, uh, it also goes hand in hand with general health, right? Right. The uh, point is that uh, if uh, the people should be familiar of the term bacteremia. Bacteremia okay. is when the bacteria enters to your body. Okay. So bacteria is when inhabitant in your oral cavity. Hmm. It enters to your body through your gums. Right. Through the blood circulation oh, okay, of your gums. Okay. So through the blood circulation, it enters to your body hmm. and it can cause certain cardiac diseases as well. Okay. So this has been um, very alarming and this should be infective endocarditis is a disease that okay. has been specifically caused by the contamination, bacterial contamination of the oral cavity. Hmm. So this should be informed and this should be the social media has a very important impact in this yeah. uh, regard to inform the people to disseminate this information to the people that keeping hmm. your oral cavity bad is been as hazardous that having a infective endocarditis or having a heart attack I mean, imagine, I mean, you never expect that if you stop uh, brushing your teeth, if you missed a day or two or something, or if you continuously do that, you are risking yourself for more cardiac diseases. We never knew that, right? Dr. Zoha, you were mentioning some other things as well. Yeah, along it, with uh, it affects uh, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's, it affects the brain as well, yeah. Yeah, please and, explain uh, the signs of that. I mean, okay, how I, I, just, I just read this research yesterday. Yeah. Uh, there's been a research about uh, gums, infected gums and inflammation affecting uh, dementia. Hmm. Uh, I didn't go through it a lot, but yeah. uh, and, and there's one other thing that's premature birthing. Premature, okay. but yeah. Uh, inflamed gums, infectious gums. They uh, the infection can travel through your arteries hmm. and target straight the fetus. Oh, yeah, and that. that can cause uh, the low baby weight and hmm. premature birthing as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, and it narrow down, it narrows down your arteries as well. So that can, you know, affect the heart and you can have those weighted cardiac. Well, imagine all these things just yeah. being related to your and oral hygiene. 80% of the general public don't know that. I, yeah. To be honest, even I didn't know that. I mean, when I was preparing for the show that, of course, then I was ta started reading up on things and started watching shows about oral hygiene as well, I discovered these things. And I told myself I'm going to question you guys about the science of this because I, like any lay layman who's not a dentist or a doctor does not know these things, right? Yeah, yeah. But Dr. Tahira, you know, what uh, children usually do whenever they go buying uh, their toothpaste, they want to go for something attractive like Teletubbies toothpaste or a star toothpaste and whatnot. Is it good for them, first of all? What ingredients should they be looking for? You know, whatever they do, obviously when they make these toothpaste, uh, tooth uh, paste, paste, they yes. keep it in mind and they know what they're doing. And th But usually for p children under six, uh, fluoride isn't advised, right? Any other toothpaste, as long as it has natural ingredients, the more natural it is, the better it is. Right. A lot of chemical exposure and a lot of chemicals for the child's uh, you know, very delicate teeth wouldn't hmm. be a very good thing to choose, right? So you should look for something that comes from a standard brand, something mm. that's approved like and everybody okay. ha is, has gone through it. And it's very good for children because you are trying to develop their habit. You're right. basically, and it, you have to make things attractive so that a child may feel, you know, he, they may want to do it, right? right? So they're like all excited, oh, tomorrow morning I have to go and I have to do it. And right, that's, right. What, that's what advertising is doing now mm. as well. You know, the people going to schools and giving off uh, toothbrushes and toothpaste, it, it, you know, it kind of develops this habit in them. For habit forming, it's very mm. nice. And mm. then after, once they've formed a habit, then you can, you know, shift them on to really more serious stuff. Okay, but so it's always better to limit the chemical exposure and go more natural in cleaning agents that are able to clean it and okay. maintain the right pH balance of their mouth. Right, so no fluoride below the age of six. Yes, that's what I've, I, I, I know. A okay. dentist would be able yeah. to tell that. Yeah, that, 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 that is how it is. Yeah. Yeah. So we do all know this TVC. It usually comes on air. Kya um, ki toothpaste mein namak hai? So do we really need salt in our toothpaste? Is it in, you know, very an essential ingredient that our teeth need? It is, it is actually. Salt okay. is basically yeah. antiseptic as well as antibacterial effect as well. Hmm. Yeah. So 
it has been good to incorporate the salt in the toothpaste, but certain toothpaste in available here hmm. are not been incorporated with the salt. Okay. So is it okay if we don't have it? Yes, or we can have a warm uh, rinses of salt, salt rinses Look once in a week right? as well. Okay. But provided the patient is not uh, hypertensive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Right. So just in the beginning, we were discussing about how you should have like a lot, a big bunch of money before you go see a dentist. And I often think if my children have ugly teeth, I should start saving right now because yeah, to should. afford <laughs> dentists, it is impossible. First of all, why do you guys charge so much? Because every other person needs dental care, well, right? You, you, you have no idea what the running and the setup cost of a dentist. Uh, yeah, dental that's why I'm asking because we're right, we don't have an uh, yeah. idea. <laughs> and it's, it's way more. It's, it's really expensive. And, you have, and we use the quality materials and the instruments and we need a sterilization lab. And all these things, you know, they, uh, they add up hmm. to a lot of money and you need a lot of capital to start right, a practice. Right. And to break even that, you need years of years of practice. Right. Yeah. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And still, if you compare it with internationally, still our yeah. rates have been very much low. Hmm. Uh, there are certain foreigners who been prefer to come here to have their dental treatment right. because there it's been a hell lot. Okay, okay. But and also, you should uh, be able to differentiate. Like, like most of the procedures are either aesthetic. Or they, or, or they are not aesthetic, right. right? So the usually the ones that are very expensive are those that are for cosme cosmetic, cosmetic reasons. Yeah. Cosmetic okay, reasons. We are not the ones that are for yeah. disease reasons. Okay, so, so people should know that. Right? So for yeah. the ones that are you know related to diseases, do you feel like dental health should be covered in primary care? Yes. Okay, I, and yes. it's not right yes. now, right? Because a lot mm -hmm. of people imagine yes. if we did have that sort of facility. Everyone in Pakistan would be looking like would be having a perfect smile or even like no oral diseases. But okay, let's talk about cosme cosmetic surgeries now because they are so in and every other person wants to have probably gold teeth. I'm just joking, but you know, it's a, it's yeah. a trend now. Yeah. So is, is a smile everything? I mean, it you really is. It builds up your confidence. It, you know, true. it balances your pr facial profile. You need a lot of things. And everyone is crazy after right. the pearly white teeth mm. and straight teeth, they, they need perfectly lined teeth. That builds build up their confidence and mm. then, you know, they can mm. carry out the daily activities. Like right. That. So as we've already, you know, we're writing down on the uh, tickers as well that we're talking about perfect smiles today. Dr. Tahra, you've been working in cosmetology yes. as well, yes, uh, if I'm using yes. the right word. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so what sort of procedures do people look for, for a perfect smile? Well, there are a lot of procedures, right? First, they go for the alignment of yeah. the teeth. That's, that's something that a dentist well, or yes. orthodontist does, right. right? Then they also look for whitening of the teeth. That's what they do when they get a perfect smile and all that. But more so, they also see there are, there are, there are wrinkles around your laugh mouth. Lines. Right? There are laugh yeah. lines around your mouth. There are smoker's lines around okay. your mouth. And then people, all, most of the dentists have started doing Botox and fillers so that the entire smile effect is achieved. So it's not just the teeth. Hmm. It's what goes around the teeth as well. Okay. Your lips have to be a perfect shape. Your cheeks have to be perfectly shaped so that, you know, yeah, the entire effect when you look at a hmm. face, it's all like symmetrical. It's right. all about symmetry, right? So then when, a, when somebody comes to you and they say I want to fix my smile it could be because it's a little deviated it's little you know it's turned a bit down a few people have a sad looking face so mm -hmm. then you know what the dentist does is through Botox or by fillers or by thread lift or whatsoever they fix even the oh. the platform they're working on the canvas they're working on wow. and they fix the smile inside with all the alignment and everything wow, so yes a lot, goes into a lot goes in and that's right? why it's expensive yeah. and it's usually these procedures that are expensive and mm. we need to tell the public that the procedures that are that go into just regular <laughs> hygiene are not that expensive Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, older people do get dentures, but for younger people who might have lost a teeth or two, do you do? I mean, what is the right age to actually get them? Is there any? To get dentures yeah. or braces? No, dentures. Because what if you need them when you're younger? If or... you're younger, I would never advise dentures for okay. a younger person. I would always advise a person to go for implants. And that's the miraculous dentistry <laughs> in our <laughs> age. We, we got implants now. They're just like your own teeth. Hmm. They, uh, they, uh, implants usually have no, they usually don't. They okay. always have a titanium root okay. and that goes in your bone. But there is a certain protocol that we need to follow before, you know, hmm. selecting a patient for an implant. Okay. Yeah, perfect. but you, that uh, it has 15 or 20 years. And that's in the book. So it can go on for years as well if you hmm. maintain the oral hygiene and, you know, but it, uh, 
Actually, the space maintenance has been very necessary. If you get your teeth uh, uh, extracted for whatever the purpose in the early age, the space maintenance of that area has been very necessary. Okay. Otherwise, the uh, uh, surrounding teeth and the opposing teeth will start drifting in that place. Hmm. So, the space maintenance is very necessary. That's whatever the what way done with the artificial teeth, the bridges okay. or Whatever the, the way you will go for it, but the yeah. space maintenance has been very necessary in implant. Again, there is a cost issue. Right, of course you don't want to leave spaces because they, then the whole structure gets deformed, yes. right? Yeah. But now all of you have been working on you know, perfect smiles and perfect symmetry of the faces as well. So um, I do have some friends who did have braces on and the moment they got them off after years, after some, one of them even got their braces off after seven years. It is a life-changing moment, I know. How does yeah. it feel to you actually bring happiness in some, you're changing their lives entirely, they're a new person, how does it feel? Well, obviously, it makes us happy to see a person smiling and happy with the work we've done. Hmm. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, it's very uh, meaningful for them as well, right, Dr. Yes, Tanya? when you know what, when a person is comfortable with who they are, hmm. they get, you know, once they're comfortable, they become hmm. happy people. And once they're happy people, they're able to succeed so much more in life. That's they're true. able to do wonders because they're so confident in their own selves. Basically, hmm. that helps boosting right. your confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You right. can't even talk to people when you have crooked teeth. You know, I, I, I had my canines up here. So oh. uh, I was very conscious wow. about that. So I got braces for six months. Okay. Yeah. For six, okay, wow, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you guys. When I was, uh, of course, below the age of seven, when I had my milk teeth, I actually didn't have milk teeth. I had black teeth. And that, of course, we all knew why. But they were so ugly, I don't even want to look at my pictures from my childhood. But for all the people out there, for the mothers who are watching or even the kids, why do we get black teeth, first of all, cavities and everything? And what are the foods we should avoid? I mean, this is, is it a myth it's, that sugar is, no, so it's, not it's, it's not. white right. poison? No, it's, no, no. Okay. it's actually sticky food. It sticks to your mouth. If you're having sticky food, all the sweets and bakery stuff and everything, you should, you know, brush your teeth after 20 minutes or 30 minutes of having it. The frizzy dinks, they're just, they're just juiceless calories right. you're having. So, and, and you were talking about when you were a kid, yeah. you, were, you were a baby when you got your teeth. So that carries at that age, they usually because of the uh, bottle, bottle drinking. Oh, yeah. And, pee, you know, kids usually sleep with the bottle in the mouth. So mothers or parents should be careful about that. Should I yeah. tell you, I left using and the bottle or feeder at the age of 11. Oh, my God. I <laughs> was addicted to it. But yes, I mean, do you... And, you know, with? whenever uh, mothers feed their children, right, it, it, they should make it a habit that after that, they should feed, feed them a little bit of water so okay. that it kind of rinses yeah. their mouth. At least it can rinse. It's very yeah. important that they rinse their mouth, right? Okay. Okay. And so this, the, inculcating such habits is very important from the At beginning. At such an early age. Yes, and you know all these candies that they have, all these candies with so many dyes in it and so many sweets, you shouldn't encourage it. You should have more fruit candies or okay. fruit something and something that you make at home. For example, just take some food. fruit and yeah. freeze it and you can have that as a lolly instead of right. having these you know, artificial sugars or sugary things. Hmm. And it's always good to maintain a good pal uh, a balance, hmm. you know, the pH balance. We, right, should, right. we should try to have it as less acidic as it can get. Okay. And you know, for that, it's better that you start uh, giving them, you know, other things, other substitutes instead of these sugary uh, drinks or fizzy mm. drinks. And it's always better to give them citrus fruits or something like that. A fruit eating, having a whole fruit, is much better for your oral hygiene mm. and your health in general compared to any of these artificial sweeteners right. or artificial sweets. Like fibrous food, which can also wash away, yeah. and it has a washing and a cleaning effect. Okay. Yeah. okay. And other than that, we as a parent should also assist our kids at least till three years of age mm. in helping them to how to brush the teeth. Make rightly. it a fun activity, you know, to yes, share Make the it moment. as a fun activity so hmm. that they can continue this habit for throughout their life. Okay. To brush the teeth after the breakfast and before bed. Right, okay. So, uh, you know, uh, you guys have already mentioned some of the substitutes that we should be having for, uh, you know, the things that we take, especially if they're sugary. But children, they do not seem to understand the reasons behind this. Of course, you tell them you'll get cavities and whatnot, but they wouldn't stop. You know, they always want chocolates or whatnot. So what are some of the fun foods or fun things that we can substitute with them and they would be still happy and their teeth will be protected. Basically the problem is that we ourselves develop their sweet taste at a very habits, early yes. at a very early yeah. age. Internationally it's been followed that salt and sweet should be prohibited to the kid okay. or should be kept minimum till two years of age so oh. that they may not develop the taste buds of the sweet or salt. Okay, okay. But you can have like strawberries on a stick and you yeah. know you can cut these uh, you know fruit in really nice patterns. You right. can have mm -hmm. molds and you can cut these fruits and you know like ice lollies and all that. The more natural products you're going to use in mm. that and the more attractive shapes you give and colors and then you 
can have programs in schools. For example, brush, brush, brush your teeth early in the morning. Right, right. They yes. start, they, you know, they right. start listening to them. Cartoons that are showing that they can, you know, you can have uh, depictions, artistic depictions, where you can tell them that, oh, you know, when you have these kind of things, there are going to be all these germs sitting inside, and then mm. they're going to go yeah. all travel down, and then they're going to eat on you. So when you you have this imagery along with it, right? And when you're giving them this message, they, mm. they do understand. Children do mm. understand. Right. But these are the artificial flavors. So if we're talking about sugar in the natural fruits like dates or let's see in any fruits they safe yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're perfectly, perfectly safe. safe yeah oh perfect that makes sense but you know another question so it's sort of a myth i've been hearing all my life a lot of i mean you've heard this as well that when your teeth do fall out and you have empty spaces in your uh, in your mouth and your gum if you start pushing your tongue against it because it itches right yeah. if you push your tongue against okay. it you'll get ugly deformed teeth is it true they're not actually deformed they're maligned basically okay, okay. yeah and that's why we advise patients when, uh, you know, the milk teeth fall out and the permanent teeth are erupting to have straight, harder food like carrots, bite on carrots. The straight bite on that thing. Apples have this kind of food that okay. they come out straight. Yeah. So anything hard? Actually, at early age, hmm. uh, till 18 months, the, your bones and teeth are being soft hmm. comparatively. So it's not the deformation of the teeth, actually. It's the deformation of the bone. Bones. Just like the thumb <clears throat> sucking, it oh. uh, it can affect the kid if he's been uh, taking a dummy or a thumb sucking hmm. or these specifiers greater than 18 months of age. Because but, but I that think you're talking about children after seven years, right? After, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's re really early age she's talking about. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm talking about 18 months right. or greater than that. So that increases your palatal vault. That increases okay. the depth of your palatal vault. And... Uh, dislocates your teeth or drifting in the teeth and crowding in the teeth starts. So, okay, if we're talking about, you know, <laughs> kids especially uh, above the age of seven, as you've already mentioned, Dr. Yeah. Soha, so we're looking at hard foods like carrot you've already mentioned. Yeah. And if they are babies, then should we or should we not be using pacifiers? We or should. anything like you know, <coughs> there's chewy actually, things that we need to nibble on. is actually to suit the parents, not the baby. <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. So <laughs> this is not at all being recommended. It's okay. never a good thing. It's not a good thing to no. give it to your baby. Yeah. So just at imagine, all. right? The eventually, you have to just throw it out to break the habit. Right, that's yeah. true. My so mom had to throw it out the car window because yes, I wouldn't get rid of it. Yes, that moment will come either <laughs> at two years of age, three years of age, or one year of age. You have to decide this. Okay, you were saying something, Dr. Yeah, I was Dyer. saying like, for example, the braces. The, yeah. What's the concept behind using the braces? Like they are aligning it in a certain way and keeping it certain hmm. way so that our entire thing molds accordingly. So right. the same way, imagine when you're taking a pacifier or anything else, you're molding it that way. Hmm. So you want to mold it in sense. a more perfect fashion. Right, okay, that yeah. makes sense. But okay, I'm learning a lot today, ladies and gentlemen and I do know what all the problems with my teeth are, the cavities and everything that I used to have, I'm understanding. But stay tuned to BTV World because we're heading out to a short break. When we come back, we'll still be discussing teeth. <laughs> it is Oral Hygiene Day. Good morning. Welcome back to World This Morning with Shazah Hashmi, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the 20th of March and we are observing International Oral Hygiene Day here in the studios because we have some amazing dentists with us. And now I need to come to a very common question. Whenever you need to, you know, clear your teeth, you go for scaling or something. Yeah. But then you, this is, I don't know if it's a myth or not, you always get to hear that it weakens your teeth. Does it? No, it does not. It just wipes off the dirt on your teeth superficially. It does so not it, al it is also said it weakens the in in <coughs> Whenever we wipe off the dirt from one place, yeah. they, 
the dirt, if the dirt is between the two teeth and the gum. Hmm. So there is a space which has been created between the teeth and the gum. Hmm. So that space, due to that space, you feel a little bit of sensitivity for a week or two. Yeah. Okay. That eventually resolves because the gums then beholds the teeth. So they are not weakened basically. So they are not at all weakened. Just more sensitive for a few. Yes. For a few <clears throat> if there is a dirt between the teeth and the gum and we have removed it. So naturally that space has to be get filled. But right. that will fill in a week or two. Due to that we feel sensitivity. Hmm. We feel uh, that tooth has been a little bit mobile. But okay. it's not actually that. Okay, makes, makes perfect sense. Okay, so now I feel like we are going to be talking about some incidents that you guys might have faced because you all happen to be doctors and get to see patients every day and clients. So I think we, I spoke to you about this yeah, earlier as well. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so did this ever happen? I mean, we come across such videos every other day, especially on Facebook and social media, that a person who's an anesthesia starts talking something, you know, funny. Did, that, did, did a funny incident happen to you? Let's Not relating to anesthesia, but it was, you know, there was a, this girl, she was, I think, 10 or 11 years old, she came in for an extraction. Okay. Because of bad teeth, obviously. Yeah. And she didn't know, she, it was the first time, and the first question she asked me, she goes like, Aap churiyan istamal I was like, <laughs> she no, <laughs> she had no idea what, what was going to happen to her. The parents might have scared her, right? If you eat bad stuff, I'll take you to the dentist. It was the parents first time as well. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually brings me to the question, what is the right age for your kid's first dental visit? Uh, when they get teeth. Whenever, when they right? start erupting, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you should start noticing any, you know, um, they, what I said before, they start getting bottle carries. So you right. should, you know, take care of that, go okay. to proper consultations every six months. Okay. Actually, we should, we should need to develop this culture, right? Where, where it is very important for us to take care of our health and to visit a doctor, not when we have a disease or not when we are suffering from something, right. but for our yeah. regular maintenance. They need right. to, everybody needs to realize how important it is for our health and hygiene, just as we take our car for our maintenance hmm. or just as we take care of our house and we have our, you know, our gardener coming in every week so why don't we go to and take care of our own selves right. we don't we, we completely you know ignore our own selves and we keep spending and we keep you know trying to go for other kind of procedures instead of actually you know going to the core issues right. where where it is right so this needs to be spread more and more amongst people and I hope through such programs and mm. you know coming and discussing mm. such things will kind of make people more and more aware of this and this should also happen at the government level the where the government, government should do it as well yeah, Come yes. down to and one particular exactly. skilled uh, individual. Do you know? Yeah. To right. And we should have annual people. medicals everywhere. I think every office should make it mandatory for mm. everybody to have an annual medical checkup, and right. that should include the mouth along with everything else as well. Just right. like the first teeth when it erupts in baby's mouth, you should start brushing the teeth. So in the same way, from that age or mm. from that time after yeah. every six months there should be a dental visit that should be made a compulsion from the government as oh, well right right of course okay but ladies I mean you rightly very rightly said all of this but this is not going to drift me away from what I was asking share with me a funny incident of whatever happened with you once can but, you recall any? <laughs> no, no, not exactly. Like, but, but I do know that our, our people are very uh, resistant to change, right? It's very hard to convince them to do anything. They, they start believing that, which, you know, we've, we've spoiled it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, for example, the, about scaling or anything, they're like so uh, rigid. Oh, no, I'm not into cosmetics. Oh, yeah. oh I, I don't care about this. So it's really funny when you try to deal with people and you're trying to tell them about hygiene and how resistant they are. And they think that hygiene has something to do with luxury or hygiene has something to to do right. with you know glamour that is so not true right, right hygiene absolutely. is a basic thing and it's very important for us to remain clean and healthy and absolutely. it's something so basic and I think that needs to be, uh, be and so it's, it's really funny when you try to convince people and they start saying no no I'm not very fashionable or I'm not very modern and I say it has nothing to do with modernism right right you know? so they just probably so, yeah. thinking that the doctor wants me to spend more money yeah, right? that, yeah. That, that is it's just like when the patient comes to you for scaling he comes with a concept that I will have a white teeth now yeah. Immediately. So, I, 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 I need to that to every other patient. Yes. Every other but patient. the purpose yeah. of scaling is not to whiten the teeth. Hmm. It is to remove the plaque or the right. calculus that has been deposited on the teeth. So for the whitening, there have been certain other procedures like hmm. the whitening of the teeth or the veneers. There may be certain other procedures. But the patient expect that I, a patient, a doctor is asking for, to, for me to do the scaling, but hmm. I don't need whitening. Doctor is just saying to spend some just money. Just for the sake of it. We have but that whitening thing, you know. Uh, right. we, had, we need whitening in everything. But you know, okay, so what is actually the right color of perfectly healthy teeth? 
It goes with your complexion. It has to go with your complexion. Yeah, and it goes in every person. never pearly white. It varies in every person because it is the reflection of the dentine that has been under the first layer enamel. Oh, okay, okay. It is a reflection of that color. So it's been different of individually. It's for different been different. people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just one more question. So for babies who are developing teeth, and of course they're irritated in this, so crying all the time. I feel so sad for them. First of all, because they can't tell you what's wrong. But doctors often give out some medicines, or you know that babies need to soothing feed on. Are soothing they gums. Yeah. Soothing I, gums. I wouldn't advise them. Okay. Honestly, because there's just local anesthesia, topical yeah. anesthesia. You're applying on the gums. To just to soothe the baby. So you shouldn't be taking that. No, not really. Uh, instead I, I would of that, never, if yeah, you give a, tea a little instead. bit of uh, calcium supplement in that particular time, right. the teeth will erupt easily. Instead of that, if you give some calcium hmm. supplement or some syrup. The teeth will erupt easily. Okay, perfect. One more thing. I'm sorry, I always keep asking questions towards even the end. I know we're short on time, but very quick question: uh, If adults, I have something wrong with their teeth. I mean, they they have they're, they are deficient in calcium, let's say, or anything else. If they start taking supplements, is it going to fix, let's say, the loss of the past twenty years? No. no, it will not fix no. the loss, but it will prevent further loss. It's oh. gonna, yeah, it's it's gonna. It will prevent yeah, the further slow decay. Slow down the recession process and slow down the further decay. And right. then you have to realize that the teeth are being held by the gums hmm. and the gum is a part of the body. And the more you correct your supplements hmm. and your nutrients, then it's going, the, the entire collagen system is going to be fine, right? Okay. And collagen is what holds the gums to the teeth and our right. skin and everything in, together. So yes, it never, it, it never goes a waste. So it okay, is, it so is a you good can, thing. Never too late, right? Yeah, you can it's start never too late. Yes. Okay, perfect. Now, when we come back, we're hanging, heading out to a short break, but when we come back, we will be discussing different types of braces and which ones to get for what kind of teeth. Stay tuned. Good morning. Welcome back to World This Morning. Yes, it is Oral Hygiene Day and I'm going to do you guys a favor. We will be talking about different kinds of braces that you can get. Dr. Zoha, please tell us there are different types, of course, but we only go for the general ones that we the always see. Ones. Yeah. yeah. First things first, uh, there's no age limit for braces. You can yeah. get braces at any point in your life. And I think the type of braces depends on uh, the person's profession and the type of treatment. Okay. Like okay. you're a celebrity, you come on TV, so you, I, I, I would advise you to hmm. go for uh, the transparent braces. Okay. Then or the lingual ones, right? The ones lingual you put ones or the ceramic ones, but you know, the, the transparent ones have their limitations. Right. But you can use them to okay. a certain extent. Yeah. Okay. Then they are the conventional ones, yeah. the the metal ones that every other person is getting. Yeah. Yeah, teenagers should get that, right? Yes, teenagers should get okay, that. Okay, okay, perfect. So, Dr. Batul, towards the end, I want you to tell us sort of a very quick but effective way of oral hygiene, of taking care of your, you know, teeth. 
effective way of oral hygiene is to brush twice daily okay. after the breakfast and before going to bed. Hmm. Add on some mouthwash in it for that particular period of time. If you have a gingivitis, if you have a bleeding gum, there are certain toothpaste sensitivity, toothpaste has also been available. If you have sensitivity, do use them, but for that particular period of time, not for whole of your life because okay, okay. Or in the oral cavity, it makes habit then. Hmm. Then you, when you quit it, you will again resume the oh, disease. Right, right. So whenever you are using any medicated toothpaste, you use it only for that particular period of time. And other than that, hmm. always do visit your dentist at least one in a year. Once in a year, at, at least, least right? At least. Six months at least. Yes. Okay, that makes perfect sense. But you know, a lot of people out there might be wondering, Dr. Thaira, why are we observing this day? Why is this so important? So what is the importance of this day? The most important thing that we learn from this day and this celebration today is that we should take care of our mouth as much as we take care of our most prized belongings, yeah. right? Our mouth it represents who we are. So today, after you go back and you watch this program, you can ask your husband or the husband can ask their wife, do I smell bad? Mm. Have you ever felt this? Have you right. felt repulsed towards me? And if you can correct yourself you'll watch look at yourself in the mirror you're going to you know smell and see a, have a small sort of test and okay, if you do okay. smell bad and if you do feel that you know your oral hygiene hmm. is not as good as it should be and even otherwise you need to make it a habit to start practicing brushing teeth rinsing right. your mouth eating less of sugary sweets quitting smoking hmm. or betel nut and going and visiting the dentist and taking care of your mouth as much as you're taking care of your entire body or anything else so I think that is that's the message I would like to give across or hmm. anybody would like to give across is take care of your mouth okay thank Mouth you so much first. for saying that and thank you so much for being here you lovely ladies you made thank my you morning thank you so here. much and if you learned anything you need to write to us on a facebook page with the name of well this morning we are on twitter well this morning without a g daily motion on youtube also well this morning and if you've missed this you can catch the repeat at 5 past 11 p.m tonight till the next time take care good morning